next we are going on to a clinic okay a doctor's clinic of course nobody will want anybody to go to a clinic because we don't want anybody to fall sick but then when you go to a doctor's uh, clinic uh, how to go about it how to speak to the doctor and uh, the terminology used at a clinic all this you should know okay so now the next topic is at the doctor's clinic okay i'm just going to give you a very funny dialogue between mani and vani okay mani says vani where are you off to okay i'll just write it on the board mani is from the village okay and he knows only a little bit of english he hasn't bought the dvd which you are watching now so uh, he knows only little bit of english here and there he can catch up and understand okay so uh, vani has been uh, in the city and she knows english so well that she can speak well and also understand english better vani where are you going vani i'm off to to the farm a sea mani <clears throat> you cannot go go there there are no farms vani farms what do you mean you are mani says you are using the wrong order isn't it see uh, mani thought instead of pharmacy he thought pharmacy then only vani understands this money he doesn't know in proper english uh, he hasn't seen the dvd and all doesn't know spoken english at all that's why he has thought of pharmacy as pharmacy okay uh, so she says oh my <clears throat> i said pharmacy which means a medical shop a 
medical shop or in America they say drug store. According to British English it is pharmacy, according to American English it is drug store. Not drugs and all, all medicines are called as drugs. Then Mani feels very uh, shy, uh, very ashamed for understanding it wrong and he says, oh, I'm sorry, he says. I misunderstood you. Okay, <clears throat> so this is just a light hearted conversation between Mani and Vani and uh, I just wanted to use this word pharmacy and um, have a pun with it. Pun means to just have a joke with that. Vani, where are you going? Vani says, I am off to the pharmacy, Mani. You cannot go there, there are no farms there here. Farms? Vani says, farms? What do you mean? Mani says, you are using the wrong order. Isn't it pharmacy? That is instead of uh, see the farmer, he thought she is going to see the farmer. So pharmacy. So that's what uh, instead of you said. No, no, you said pharmacy, but actually he thought to see the farmer. Okay, and she explains later. I thought you said see the farmer. Okay, then Vani explains, oh my, I said pharmacy, which means a medical shop or drug store. Mani, oh I am sorry, I misunderstood you. Okay, in English certain words like a pharmacy, it has a different spelling altogether. It doesn't start with a F, it starts with PH, but still it has the pronunciation pharmacy okay so what is a pharmacy it's a medical shop okay so i hope you've understood this terminology now we'll see more uh, things regarding clinic or doctor's uh, clinic now we are going to see okay okay now you have an old grandmother at home and she slipped and fell in the bathroom what would you do because old people when they fall down it's very very risky you should immediately inform the police uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry you should immediately inform uh, a doctor and ask for his or her help but no doctor will come leaving all his patients isn't it so immediately you call for an ambulance okay because it's very difficult for you to lift an elderly person take them to the car or uh, take them to an auto and take them to the doctor so you call for an ambulance okay let's see a dialogue now uh, between or how you should use a telephonic conversation at this juncture we are going to see now Hema, Hema's grandmother has fallen down in the bathroom and she is calling up um, the ambulance, okay. Hello, is it RS Hospital? Uh, 
I need an ambulance I need an ambulance immediately my grandmother who is 88 years old has had a fall in the bathroom please send an ambulance send an ambulance to the following address number 32 Fort Cross Street, MGR Nagar. Hospital receptionist. Yes, ma'am. The ambulance will be at your doorstep. At your doorstep or at your house within 10 minutes. Okay. See, now, nowadays, is, uh, old people or elderly people falling down or uh, anybody like due to stress and strain, people getting a, getting a cardiac arrest, all this is very common. But immediately, you should not uh, think of giving any medic medicines on your own, okay? That is, medication should be done only at the hospital. So, this case is if you give your own medicines, it may prove to be very fatal. What do you mean by fatal? It may even take the life of that person. So, you have to rush them to the hospital in an ambulance. Okay, so the same uh, thing dialogue can be used for a cardiac arrest also. You can even say, My grandfather has had a, a cardiac arrest or heart attack. So, I need an ambulance, send it immediately. Why we call an ambulance is, ambulance has a siren, isn't it? So, when they sound the siren, other vehicles will give way for the 
ambulance to go. Whereas if you take your grandmother or grandfather in your car, they will not know, others will not know that uh, there is a sick patient in the uh, car. So they may not give you way and that few minutes may prove to be very, very fatal. It may take the life of that person. Okay, so first thing for an emergency, you should call for an ambulance. Okay, okay. now uh, I'm sure you've, uh, uh, you've learned what to do at a time of crisis. So Hema, uh, she calls up the hospital and she asks for an ambulance. Hello, is it RS hospital? So she asks a question. I need an ambulance immediately. So she is not giving any story how her grandmother went into the bathroom and how she slipped and fell. All that is not necessary. All that you need is an ambulance immediately. I need an ambulance immediately. My grandmother who is 88 years old has had a fall in the bathroom. Please send an ambulance to the following address. Uh, 32 4th Cross Street, MGR Nagar, Mailapur, Chennai. And the hospital receptionist, yes ma'am, the ambulance will be at your, at your house, at your house within 10 minutes. And she says, thank you. Okay, so first we saw what a pharmacy is. Now we, uh, we have discussed how very important an ambulance is uh, to go to a, a doctor's uh, place, a doctor's clinic or a hospital, how it is very, very important. Okay, now if a patient's condition is very critical, where will they put the patient in? They'll put the patient in an ICU. What is an ICU? ICU. Intermediary care unit, okay, or intensive care unit, intensive, that is very detailed, uh, that is they won't allow other people to enter in because uh, those uh, patients may catch the germs and uh, other infections. So in intensive, intensive means in detail, they look after the patient, intensive care unit, okay. So uh, they have different types of uh, units that is uh, um, in maternity ward. Maternity ward is a place where uh, women uh, when they have their babies they are treated in the maternity ward. And surgery is a place where anybody has to undergo a surgery that is where they cut open the body and uh, perform any operation they are taken to the surgery. Okay, so in a hospital, you find different places like this. Okay, in case you've broken your bones, uh, like your hand or leg or uh, your ribs, what do they do? Where do you go to? You go to an X-ray unit and take a take an X-ray. Okay, uh, only then they'll find out whether the bones are broken, where it's broken, and they can give immediate treatment. Nowadays even for dental surgery they ask you to take an x-ray and come so that they'll know where the tooth is broken or how it is uh, rooted in the gums everything. So with medical facilities doctors find it very very easy to treat a patient. Okay so we'll move on to the next step now. Um, what happens in the doctor's clinic? Okay, when somebody goes to a clinic, you sit in front, doctor asks you to sit in front of him and he examines you with a stethoscope. And whatever your ailment is, he gives or he prescribes medicine accordingly. Now I'm going to give you certain um, uh, conversations which the doctor may have with you or what instructions a doctor would give you when you go to a clinic. Okay, first he may say sit up straight, isn't it? And then he will keep the uh, stethoscope and examine your heartbeat, your, whether there's any phlegm in your 
chest and all that. Okay, so I'll give you some sentences which the doctors may use. Sometimes uh, our spoken English DVDs may be useful even for doctors. They may be very intelligent, very, very uh, uh, knowledgeable in whatever subject they are dealing with. But to reach out to the patient, they need small, small, um, simple sentences which will make it easier for them. Okay, so I'm going to give some uh, sentences which doctors uh, usually use as instructions. Okay, I'll just write down doctor's instructions. Okay, I'm going to give you some common instructions that the doctors use to a patient, okay? Sit up straight. Breathe easy. Okay. Next one. Uh, take a bland diet. What do you mean by bland diet? Bland diet means without much oil, without much uh, salt and uh, without any spicy uh, ingredients in it. Okay, bland. Okay, so all these terminologies you should know. Take a bland diet. Third point. Bland diet, I told you, okay. Avoid hot spicy food. Okay, now this hot refers to not the warmth or uh, the, uh, that is the temperature. Here it means hot to taste. Not hot to touch but hot to taste. Hot spicy food that means with too much of masala and all that you should avoid such kind of food. That is why take a bland diet it is written here. Next, uh, take a test. Take a blood test after fasting. Usually when a person has diabetes, they take a test after fasting. What do you mean by fasting? That is, first you take uh, that a post-brandle test that is you go and give your blood for testing and then they will tell you go home have food and exactly after 1 hour and 45 minutes come back for uh, test. So that is called fasting that without having any food or water, water you can have without having any food at all that is called fasting. So these terminologies you should know. Take a blood test after fasting. Take the syrup. Post meal and after meal. Post meal. Post meal thrice daily. Okay, what does this mean? Take the syrup post meal thrice daily. Post means after. Okay, so uh, you have to take that syrup. Every day after having your meals, that is breakfast, lunch and dinner, thrice daily, every day. Okay, so these are the small, small um, instructions that the doctor may give you. Okay, um, when you have wheezing, take a puff. 
what do you mean by this puff it doesn't mean taking a smoking a cigarette okay sometimes they say take a puff means um, smoking a cigarette or puffs something to eat it's not that take a puff means it means an acetylene puff okay the inhaler okay i'll write within bracket this puff means in acetylene inhaler why i'm giving you all this is when you go to a doctor and these are the terminologies a doctor uses and if you don't know if you don't understand you may wonder what is happening okay that's why I take a puff means acetylene inhaler okay next one if your feet are stores if your feet are swollen keep your feet feet raised keep your feet raised if you keep your feet raised that, that is the fluid collection which goes to the feet will get back otherwise all the fluid collection will go and rest in your feet and it gets swollen okay so that's another instruction that the doctors give okay uh, what else um, these these are the usual things and also doctors usually ask people to ask the patients to walk and exercise walk every day for at least half an hour okay walking is a very good exercise they say in those days they say an apple a day keeps the doctor away that is those days apples were so full of nutrients that if you eat an apple uh, you need not go to a doctor at all they'll say but nowadays even those apples are uh, filled with all sorts of i mean pesticides and all that they uh, put for their fruits and that gets into our body and it causes uh, at times it causes hazards so uh, what now is a in thing or the best thing is walk every day for at least half an hour and you can uh, keep your body trim your body gets a lot of oxygen and it's a very good exercise so these are the usual things that doctors uh, generally give to the patients okay so when you go to a doctor what do you do you tell him what your problem is for example good morning doctor uh, yes good morning please sit down doctor may say what's your problem and you may say i have a bad headache uh, for the past three days and the doctor may ask you uh, have you tested your eyes uh, no sir um, i haven't so please go and get your eyes tested and then we shall see what to do next okay this is one sort of a conversation or you may go to a doctor with a very bad stomach ache so the doctor says yes sit down and then he'll ask you what your problem is and you may say doctor i have a terrible stomach ache it's unbearable and i don't know what to do i took some painkiller but in spite of that i have okay please go and lie down on the bed he may say and when you lie down he may uh, press here and here and check and then he may find out that you have some problem with your appendicitis okay appendix appendix everybody has an extra bag which collects all the unwanted uh, stones or things in it and if there are stone collections in your appendix it may cause problem so doctor immediately may suggest that you go in for a surgery to remove that appendix which is called appendicitis 
okay so there are lot of ailments like this so you should be polite to the doctor and also you should freely tell him what your problem is unless you tell him your problem clearly a doctor will not be able to diagnose your problem okay so next time you go you please open up and tell exactly what you feel okay and these are the uh, doctor's instructions that he'll give you and you should also now know to follow okay i'm going to read another talk show on doctors okay if you switch on the tv these days after a certain time uh, there'll be a hello doctor like patients can call up and ask questions to the doctor stating their problem okay hello doctor and uh, they call up and say doctor I like this i've been having uh, continuous back pain or this and that so now we are going to see a uh, sugam phone in show okay this is like a tv program this is called a sugam phone in show we have a compare and caller callers we have and doctors now we have four different doctors i'll tell you what each doctor's specialization is and let's see what they are uh, giving advice as now compare compare means the one who anchors the show okay now let's go ahead uh, compare welcome viewers to our sugam phone in show this week we have with us dr balan pediatrician dr ammay appa appanar geriatrician dr tulka peer dermatologist and dr brian de souza neurologist dr bonnie rajkumar orthopedic surgeon we request our viewers to be brief in their queries and spell out their symptoms clearly remember our number is 0442827921 here's a first call ring 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 okay they get the call caller 1 is on the line question to dr tulgapier please Doctor Tulgapir, yes. Doctor, I'm Harry, an 18-year-old college student. I have lost a lot of hair in recent months. I have an itchy scalp too. I have not changed my hair oil or shampoo. Recently, I drive a two-wheeler and wear a helmet. Could that be the reason for my hair fall okay now to whom is the first caller uh, talking to dr tulkapier and dr tulkapier is a dermatologist now who is a dermatologist okay dermatologist okay dermatologist uh, doctor tulkapier Now who's a dermatologist a doctor who deals with skin infection Doctor who deals with skin infections okay so it can be in the hand it can be in the leg it can be even our hair okay so uh, this caller one says that his uh, scalp has become very dry and his hair is falling so he wants to ask the dermatologist how it can be treated and he's asking whether wearing a helmet all the time when he rides a bike is the main reason for uh, losing his hair okay um, okay now let's see what the doctor says 
Certainly not Mr. Harry. It is a myth that wearing a helmet will cause loss of hair. Your problem could be dandruff. Now what is dandruff? Dandruff is a dry condition of your scalp. Scalp is the outer um, skin of your uh, head. Okay, within the hair. And if it's uh, the skin becomes dry, it becomes scaly and it be uh, that is called the dandruff. Check if there are white powdery flakes on your scalp. It is dandruff that is a major cause of hair fall. It causes itchiness too. Itchiness means scratchy feeling. Use anti-dandruff shampoo twice a week. Uh, okay, uh, candid TV could prove effective. If you have an oily scalp, wash your hair regularly. If you have, uh, uh, if you have dust and dirt combined with all those it could cause dandruff. Also, use your own comb, towel, etc. Okay, after Dr. Tulkapir gave his advice, caller one says, thank you doctor and compare uh, speaks now. Our next caller, tring, 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 the bell rings and the next caller has come. Um, question to Dr. Bonnie Rajkumar. Who is Donny, Dr. Bonnie Rajkumar? Orthopedic surgeon. Who is an orthopedic surgeon? Orthopedic Orthopedic surgeon. G. Okay, orthopedic surgeon. Um, now here, let's see first uh, what his ailment is. Before which, orthopedic means something to do with the joints. Okay, your legs, your hands, orthopedia. That means uh, anything to do with the joints. Surgeon means one who performs surgery. Let's see the question. Uh, yes, please, says doctor. Caller 2. I am Nikita, a medical, medical transcriptionist. For the past 6 months, I have been having pain at the joint of my neck and spine. It arises when there is a jerk while traveling on my bike or when I bend down to work. Sometimes I also have giddiness. I had an x-ray taken and doctor said that I don't have spondylitis. I apply hot water fermentation and uh, gels when pain occurs. How do I get rid of it? Okay, now where is a patient having the pain? In the neck. Okay, so uh, the patient thought that it may be spondylitis. What is spondylitis? It is the inflammation of the bones in the spinal cord. And she thought it was that and she took x-ray and all that but it was not that. So she, when she gives hot water fermentation, what do you mean by fermentation? That is keeping uh, the hot water in a rubber bag, you can just place it on the affected place. That is your, the pain, place where you have the pain. When you keep it, that's called fermentation, okay. It gives you a nice feeling. So when she does that, it gives her a lot of relief. Okay. So Dr. Uh, Boni Rajkumar says, your complaint is common among computer professionals. You need to take a few precautions. Precautions means to be careful about things. Do not work for more than 45 minutes at a stretch. Okay. Like nowadays everybody is sitting in front of the computer, working out, working out all the time. So at a stretch, not more than 45 minutes. In case you have a day's, full day's work at the computer, after 45 minutes you have to take a break, take a walk around and then come back to the place. Okay, so that's what the doctor says. Always rest for 15 minutes every hour. Your keyboard should be close to your body. Your elbow 
uh, should be bent at an angle while working that is like this ok. If your elbow is bent only your uh, keyboard will be here is not it. If you put it on your lap it is not good the rays the radiation will affect your body. So, you should always keep it on a table straight here and your elbow should be at an angle and uh, use a thin pillow at night do not use uh, two or three pillows for your head you should use a thin pillow for, while you sleep. Neck exercises are useful try these exercises he demonstrates a few exercises on TV like maybe uh, changing or rotating your neck like this or something like that the doctor may be showing ok. Now, orthopedic uh, surgeon uh, doctor dealing with with what joints bone and joints ok bone and joints in the body. Okay. Orthopedic surgeon means one who performs surgeon means one who performs surgery. Okay. Next let us see what the next scholar says. Uh, compare. There is our next scholar tring 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 okay caller 3. Hello is it Sugam Phonin show? Compare. Yes it is. Uh, I am Mrs. Guna. My question is to Dr. Balan. My daughter aged 3 suffers from frequent cold, cold, cough and wheezing with fever. On several occasions the child vomits food with mucus. We give her only boiled water. Doctors have diagnosed upper respiratory tract infection and prescribed medicines which only give temporary relief. Now, whom is, doc, is she calling? She is calling uh, Dr. Balan. Who is Dr. Balan? Pediatrician. Who is a pediatrician? Okay, who is a pediatrician? Pediatrician is a doctor dealing with small children. Doctor for doctor for small children below 10 years of age. Ten to twelve, okay. Okay. They are called pediatricians. Now, what did uh, Mrs. Guna say? That her daughter is 3 years old and she has cold and fever. Let us see what Dr. Balan says. Many children have this problem, which is very recurrent when young. Do not worry, provided the child is, child is active, gaining weight, and sleeping peacefully. A child vomiting, especially after a bout of coughing is not a cause for worry because it clears the airways blocked by mucus. Some preventive measures could be taken like preventing her from playing in the mud, drinking iced drinks and or giving or going into an AC room soon after sweating profusely and avoiding smokes smoke around the child and continue the medicines and her immunity will gradually improve. So, what does the doctor say? This is a very common problem. So, do not let your child sweat profusely. Profusely means too much of sweating and immediately if the child goes into an AC room that will affect the child and it will catch cold or uh, drinking cold water from the fridge that will also affect and uh, what else 
he also says playing in the mud because mud uh, it may have germs in it and that will get into the fingernails and get into the body. So all this they have to be careful he says. Compia says viewers please stay with us we will be back with you after a short break for the commercials. So this is a TV program and uh, they have wound up the show. But there are a few doctors who did not uh, come and give any um, suggestions. Who said doctor? Ammai Appar, uh, geriatrician. Geriatrician. Who is a geriatrician? A, a geriatrician is a doctor who deals with old people, okay? Doctor for old people, for elderly people I'll say, elderly people above the age of, or elderly people or senior citizens we can say, above the age of 70. age of 60 plus okay geriatrician mainly 80 year old people uh, 70 year old people they all go to a geriatrician okay and who is uh, who are the other doctors pediatrician geriatrician dermatologist no, neurologist who is a neurologist Who's a neurologist? Neuro means anything to do with nerves, okay? Doctor dealing with nervous problem. Okay, nervous problem, uh, whoever has any problem with nerves, shakiness and all that, they go to the neurologist. These four doctors only we saw at the TV show. But there are some more specialists whom I would like to introduce, um, which is not in that uh, TV show, I would like to uh, give you. I will clean the board now. Well, now I have written down all the specialists, okay, when you go to a doctor's clinic or a hospital, you should know what to look for, what pro whatever problem you have, what to look for. You have nephrologist, uh, you have cardiologist, you have dentist, you have neonatal specialist, urologist, gynecologist, uh, ophthalmologist, Diabetologist, gastroenterologist, and oncologist. Okay, all these are the specialists in each field. Okay, our human body is so complex that doctors specialize in these subjects and they study. We just saw four different uh, doctors in the TV talk show, isn't it? And who are who are they? Pediatrician. Uh, we say geriatrician, then we say we saw ortho, um, uh, orthopedic specialist and who else and dermatologist, four we saw, now we are going to see ten more, okay. Who is a nephrologist, doctor dealing with nephrons that is what is that, kidney, Kidney, bah. okay, mainly dealing with kidneys, okay. Cardio, also they look into uh, gallbladder and all that, closer um, organs. Cardiologist, dealing with heart. Okay, if a person has a heart attack, you should go to the cardiologist. Uh, if you, if a patient has a kidney failure, you have to go to the 
uh, nephrologist. Neurologists and nephrologists, you should always uh, be very careful. Neurologist is with the nerves and nephrologist is with the um, kidneys. Okay. Dentist dealing with teeth. Teeth and gums. Okay. Neonatal. What is neonatal? Born babies. We saw pediatrician. Pediatrician is only after one year old babies. Okay. Uh, did we, uh, we saw it in the previous uh, uh, um, talk show, isn't it? Pediatrician is only a uh, doctor dealing from 1 year to 12 years old. But neonatal is a born baby to the age of 1. Born, newly born babies till 1 year. After one year, they go to a pediatrician. Urologist. Urologist is dealing with um, urinary problems, the urinary tract infection, urinary bladder. Bladder and tract okay urinary bladder and tract gynecologist is the one who deals with um, uterus mainly for women a gynecologist is a doctor mainly for women dealing with uh, uterus Uterus is a bag which holds a baby in a mother's womb, okay, uterus and uh, etc. Uh, uterus and also ovaries, okay. Ophthalmologist, U uterus and ovaries. Oh, I'm sorry, Utri uterus and ovaries, okay, um, dealing with uterus and ovaries, that is a reproductive system of a female person, okay. Next, ophthalmologist dealing with eyes. In case you have um, cataract, formed in your eye or you have a problem with your eyesight, you have to go to, to an ophthalmologist. Diabetologist, nowadays it's become very common, everybody seems to have diabetes, uh, that is the sugar level, the insulin level, if it increases, uh, it become, the patient becomes a diabetic patient, okay. Dealing with uh, uh, the sickness of, in uh, we can even say uh, with the sickness of rice and sugar level. Sugar level in a body or insulin level in the body. Gastroenterologist. Many people have this problem when they have uh, food, there some seems to be a thunder and a, a storm inside the stomach and they may have problems uh, later. So that is a gastroenterology, okay, that a person dealing with a um, digestive system. Digestive system in a body.
okay and last but not the least oncologist oncologist is a doctor dealing with cancer in any part of the body oncology dealing with cancer dealing with a disease called cancer okay so you have learned now when you go to a hospital whom to look for for what ailment you have nephrologist dealing with kidneys cardiologist dealing with heart dentist dealing with teeth and gums neonatals uh, dealing with born babies till one year urologist dealing with bladder and tract infection gynecologist dealing with uterus and ovaries uh, ophthalmologist dealing with eyes optic nerve everything diabetologist dealing with the sickness of rice and sugar level or insulin level gastroenterologist dealing with the digestive system and oncologist dealing with a disease called cancer okay so all this you have to know this is not only english but also general knowledge so you should know all this and you should know uh, when you go to a, a hospital even you can help others uh, to meet the right kind of doctor